Hello. Um, this is going to be a small response to Brian's video on Proverbs 24, verse 17. Okay. And according to Brian, I'm going to get the little screen share thing up here. Okay. Shrink me. Display capture. Okay. It's this video here is here on this Proverbs twenty four seventeen. And listen to what he says here, okay? second here. All right, another video I need to do here quickly. Um, I want to talk about Proverbs chapter 24 verse 17 and how I've seen a lot of people in the comments they're misapplying it. Um, let's read here. We're going to read actual context though and see what it's really saying. Proverbs chapter 24, beginning in verse 15. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Okay, here's verse 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. And so, when I preach and I say, I can't wait to see the destruction of the wicked. Rejoice not when thine enemy, you know, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be led when he stumbleth. Mm. <laughs> You're wrong, Brother Brian. We're just supposed to be secular humanists that just say, everybody has good in them, and we should always look for the good in everyone. Um, that's not what the scripture is saying there. And by taking one verse like that, and taking it, ripping it out of its context, and saying... Okay. Proverbs 24 was not ripped out of context. Okay. The full context of... Proverbs 24 is don't be envious against the wicked. Don't fret thyself because of the wicked. If your enemy stumbleth, don't laugh at him. That's the bottom line. Okay? We're going to read Proverbs 24 in its context. Okay? And we're going to read from verse 1 unto verse 21. Okay? Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Like you do, Brian. Your heart studieth destruction. Okay? So does the other one. Okay? He's always want to talk about the vicious things. He's like talking about God's wrath. He's like saying, oh, I can't wait till I get to see people burn in hell and things like that. And that's utter wickedness, sir. Okay? I don't call you brother because you're not a brother. Okay? What is inside you does not come from the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? For the heart study of destruction and the lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom and houses builded and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant things. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counsellors there is safety. Wisdom is too high for a fool, he openeth not his mouth in the gate. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of the foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. Okay. And what you're doing there, Brian, in your video here, as you are being a scorner. Saying you should never be glad when you see God's judgment hit a lost person that deserves that judgment and has no desire for repentance. You rip it out of context, you're causing the See, he uses this that they have no desire for repentance. God gives repentance, Brian. And God gives faith. Okay. So I once again you're kind of making a mess of scripture. The Bible to contradict, and I'm going to show you that today. Um, there is the system of justice and judgment. And this. Yeah. There is judgment, Brian. The wicked are going to be turned into hell. That's true. Okay. But it's not for you to sit and laugh at. 
God will mock those people in the day when their calamity comes. But there's a big difference, Brian, between the Lord Jesus Christ and you. Big difference, sir. Give me the Pauline epistles where we're to be glad when an enemy stumbleth. Where you're to wish destruction upon people. Okay, but continue on here. Okay, I'm going to show here from the video, we're going to play a little bit more. Little wishy-washy whatever thing that there should never be any punishment upon the evildoers out there and upon the wicked. No one says that there shouldn't be any punishment upon the wicked and evildoers, Brian. No one's saying that. God gives everyone a chance. I mean, you're shooting first and asking questions later and all that kind of stuff. When you're rejoicing the fact that enemies stumbling and things like that. Yeah, that is wickedness. Okay? That doesn't come from the Holy Spirit of God, sir. And by your own logic, okay, then people should be laughing when you get sent to hell. Not if, when. Okay? Uh, that's not a teaching of Scripture. So to falsely apply Proverbs 24, verse 17, and we will look at what it really means here in a minute. Well, we're going to look at what it really means. Brian, it says what it really means. Okay, let's continue on. If thou faint in the day of adversity, verse 10, sorry. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, you see what that says, brethren? Okay? See, this is the thing about false teachers out there. They would have you believe that the scriptures, there's some enigma that can't be understood. But John chapter 16, verse 13, the Lord Jesus Christ spake in that verse, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Okay? In fact, the Lord even said, and I think it's Matthew and Mark as well, that I thank thee, Father of heaven, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. If you can't read a proverb, Brian, don't go blaming others. Okay? You see here, verse 11, If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death. What does that mean? If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, you know, the wicked. Okay? They're drawn unto death. Okay, if you forbear to deliver them, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the hearts consider it, and he that keepeth thy soul doth not he know it, and shall not he render every man according to his works? My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul, when thou hast found it. You haven't found it, Brian. Okay? Just going to say that. Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Okay? Brian, the fruits of your ministry for years, you come up with these false doctrines, and then you cause arguments over them, you scorn people, you mock them, and then other people take the brunt of it. Okay? Other people take the brunt of it. That doctrine where you had basically, about two years ago, you'd, you'd angrily came out and says, I want everyone out there who's a King James, or professes to be a King James Bible believer, I want everyone to confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And you had no idea of the doctrine, sir. Do you know what I mean? You had no idea of it. And there was people like myself that fell for that carry-on. Do you know what I mean? And who was the ones taking most of the beating for it? Because it wasn't you, Brian. You just made a small apology video. And it was, oh, I'm sorry about that. You do realise, sir, you're causing these things. How many more false doctrines are you going to come out with that are going to cause division and contention within the body of true believers. Hmm? Sir, you ought to put this book down. 
because you don't know how to read it. Okay? Verse 17 now. Rejoice not when an enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Right? What's so difficult about that to understand? It's clear as day. Rejoice not. Okay? What does the word rejoice mean? It means to puff yourself up and be happy and you're not to be happy. Okay? Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. Who would thine enemy be, Brian? Would that not be the man that stole your bit of your thing from a dead truck? Were you using that truck, Brian? And I've seen that video as well where you said, oh, people... These, um, imagine stealing from a man that doesn't have much money. All I say to that, Brian, is seriously, you really need to get down off of that throne of pride before the Lord kicks you off it. Okay? Here's the thing. You claim to have not much money, Brian, but I don't know a poor man on this earth that can afford off-grid properties, their own land, a tank a fire truck, etc. Okay? And because someone came and stole a bit off a truck that you're no longer using, a dead truck, which you even admitted was an old rust bucket, well, that's them thieving. No, they probably thought it was a bit of junk. That's why they've done it. Okay? Rejoice not when an enemy, you know, the person who stole your catalytic converter, Rejoice not when he falleth, let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. And yet you're out there saying that if, oh, if you're, one of your neighbours was to kill the man, you'd be like, oh good. Um, are you kidding me? Are you really kidding me here, Brian? Okay, this proverb is not very difficult to understand, brethren. Okay. But unto those who have been blinded by Satan, yeah, this proverb would, would would have all sorts of different meanings, even though First Peter chapter one verse twenty says, knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Okay. Rejoice not when thine enemy stumbleth, and let not thine heart be glad when oh, rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him. And he turned away his wrath from him. Okay? Do you know what that's saying, Brian? It's saying that if you rejoice when your enemy stumbleth and your heart's glad when he falleth, that God's going to turn away his wrath from him and you're going to get it. Do you realise that's what that means? Okay? Verse 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men. Once again, okay? Neither be thou envious at the wicked, for there shall be no reward to the evil man, and the candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Like you, Brian, with all these false doctrines that you keep coming up with. Do you know what I mean? They cause div division, they cause all sorts of nastiness, bitterness. Okay? Psalm 37, like you can read Psalm 37, that's another place where it says fret, fret, fret not thyself because of evil men. Okay? It's all about giving place unto wrath. Okay? If you go to Proverbs, um, not Proverbs, if you go to Romans 12, okay? Now, Brian, you may find this hard to understand, but those that have eyes to see an understanding heart and ears to hear because they are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, you know, which guides them into all truth. Okay? These verses aren't too difficult to understand. But to you and the people that follow you, Brian, apparently apparently it really is. Okay? But Romans chapter 9, verse 19 unto verse 21. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Someone steals your catalytic converter out there. Why didn't you give place unto wrath? Hmm? 
Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Okay? For all you know, Brian, the man who stole your catalytic converter could have had a hungry family at home. Okay? That's maybe the reason why he was stealing it. Okay? Maybe because he's refused maybe the wicked vaccination or something like that. Maybe he's lost his job. It's called pleading the cause, Brian. It's not saying, oh, if someone's not had milk and cookies or something like that. That's wicked, sir. That's emulation. Okay, that's a sign of those that have been given over to a reprobate mind. That's a sign of those who the Lord has rejected. Okay, and if you read Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 30, they are all slanderers, brass and iron. Reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. Do you understand that? Okay. Verse 20 again. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Do you not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good? Okay. I can't speak for the full body of Christ, Brian. I can only speak for myself personally. And I'm not being funny, but you think you're the only one on this earth who's been through some remote difficulties. Is is that what you really think? Okay. I mean, the Apostle Paul, he was in perils of robbers. Do you know what I mean? As in robbers happened multiple times. Okay. They're basically attention seeking, Brian, is what you're doing. Moving on. To falsely apply it to anybody who says, I can't wait to see the wicked judged, uh, you're wrong in that you are in sin. Oh, he's about, to, he's about to add the scriptures again. You are in sin, he's about to say. Yeah, this is what they do. They constantly try to make people flake. They constantly try to add their own standards into the word. Do you know what I mean? So to excuse their own wickedness. Brad, not Brad. Brian, your fruit stinks. Sin for doing that. So quit writing in the comments because I'm just going to delete it in the future. It's getting yeah, you're just going to delete the comments, are you? Because you don't agree with them. Why don't you answer those comments, Brian? Okay, I haven't wrote one. I don't have a Rumble account. But I would like to see what those comments say. Guaranteed people are saying to you, look, you're wrong in this. But rather than take any kind of correction, because, you know, correction is grievous unto him that has forsaken the way. No, instead you just puff yourself up further and further. Getting on my nerves, okay? Getting on your nerves. See what I'm saying? Brian, I could turn around and say with the damage that your ministry caused to my life that you're getting in my nerves, I could say that. All your false doctrines, everything. I could have had blessed fellowship with other members of the body of Christ years ago. But I threw them away because I was following your ministry at the time. You do realise that the pain my life's been in simply because of your ministry. Okay? You're not getting away with this, sir. Get a little sick and tired of seeing that whole thing there. Yeah, me too, Brian. Me too. Verse 18. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself because of evil men, be, neither be thou envious at the wicked, for there shall be no reward to the evil man, the candle of the wicked shall be put out. Does it sound like the Lord is not for judgment? Brian, no one's saying that the Lord's not for judgment, but Brian, you are not the Lord. Neither are you a member of the body of Christ. You understand that? Where's the fruits of the Spirit with you? You have the lusts of the flesh, they're granted, but you do not have the fruits of the Spirit, sir. There's no gentleness, there's no meekness. You are prideful, you are arrogant, 
And all of those things are contrary to the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is to hate arrogancy and pride, and the forward tongue do I hate. And the way you're speaking in that video, Brian, that is a very forward tongue. I used to stay with an older brother who used to violently assault me. And he used to talk the exact same way as you. Oh, I'm getting sick of this. Do you know what I mean? Aaron, why aren't the dishes done? Have you done that yet? Do you know what I mean? It's a very same attitude. I can see it a mile off, Brian. No, he's for judgment. He has plans to judge those people. Yes, Brian. The Lord does have plans to judge wicked people. And who are the wicked, Brian? Those that reject the mercies of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that try and climb up some other way. Those who add to the word. Get that? You know, especially false prophets which come to those in sheep's clothing. Hmm? See, you're willing to point a gun at everybody and anybody else, Brian. But what about when it comes to you? What about your wickedness, Brian? Hmm? And you're going to continue making mammon out of the body of Christ? Do you know what I mean? Two or three hundred dollars for a hard drive. What happened to buy the truth and sell it not? You're encouraging JT's graven image encrusted book. I don't care what you say. You and him are both wrong. What it's talking about there in verse 17, I'll just say this before we read the rest of the verses. What's talking about in verse 17 is when you say... Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. You're taking glory away from the Lord. Okay? Some guy, the guy that... No, it's displeasing to the Lord, Brian. It's not anything about taking glory away from the Lord. I mean, seriously, where does it say that? Adding to the word again. Let's go to Proverbs, Brian. Okay. I'll be putting your name in the title of this video as well. Okay. I'm going to mention your name now because you have to be marked and avoided because you, sir, you are literally just a raging heretic. Well, let's go to Proverbs. I think it may be 29. Okay. Yeah, in Proverbs 20, 29, first of all, okay. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Okay. Verse 22. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honour shall uphold the humble in spirit. Okay? Verse 24. Whoso is partnered with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth not, he heareth cursing and bereath it not. Okay? I'm going to say this. That, um, yeah, you're not supposed to be partners with a thief. Okay? No one's out there blessing the wicked, Brian. No one's out there, okay, saying these things. No one's out there saying that, oh, that God's judgment isn't going to come upon the wicked. Okay? God is a God of judgment. And that even means towards you, Brian. Okay? But that's not the verse I was looking for, actually. The verse that I was actually looking for here was... Yeah. Proverbs 31, verse 8. Open thy cause for the dumb, and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Okay. Have you ever heard John 7, 24? 
judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And Proverbs 18.13 tells us that um, a man that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Okay. But the other verse that I'm looking for was the one that says, Add thou not unto his words, lest he refuse thee, and thou be found a liar. Okay. Trying to find that verse. I apologise, brethren, it's taken me such a while to find this verse. I don't know everything. Unlike some others. Okay. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. A liar. Stop adding to the word of God, Brian. You're a liar. Rob this, okay? The guy that took our catalytic converter. He's finally brought to justice, and I say, yeah, you know, who's the man? I'm the one that did this thing. I'm the one that exposed this guy. I caught him. I wrestled him to the ground. Yeah, yeah, you know. No. The Lord helped that guy to be caught. The Lord is the one that, that made this thing happen. Even yeah, and you're not supposed to be glad over it. If it would be me that caught the guy and I handcuff him and get the police there and whatever else or tie him up or something, even if it would be me, I'd say, thank you, Lord, for what you did. That's all it's talking about there. It's saying you're not to take the glory for yourself. Chapter and verse in that, Brian, Brian. It doesn't say that anywhere in the text. You are adding to the word of God. Rejoice not, you know, when thine enemy falleth and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. It's just simply saying, I'm taking this away. I'm divorcing the Lord from this situation and saying it's all about me. Well, again, you're adding to the word of God again. To excuse your own wickedness. Why? Lest the Lord see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. God's wrath is on that bad guy. But if you... Yeah. And God's wrath is upon all the wicked brine. Not just upon the one who steals from you. Okay? And Brian, you're not showing any fruits of the Spirit. Okay? You add to the Word of God. You can't read a proverb correctly. I'm sorry to say, Brian, but it really is beginning to look like you are... In fact, I'm, I don't make no apology for this. Sorry, Lord. Brian, you are 100% without doubt a lost man. The things that I suffered because of your ministry, the people that follow you, the lies, the deception, the you are a wolf in sheep's clothing and so is everyone that follows you. Take it away from the Lord and you put it on yourself, then the Lord's going to say, okay, then it's all about you then. I'm not going to... And I'm just going to clarify, okay... Just going to clarify, not everybody that follows, but you can be deceived, okay? I was deceived for nearly five years, okay? I wasn't preaching for five years, no. But I followed Brian's ministry nearly every single day since 2016. What happened? The Lord pulled me aside, and the Lord showed me my wickedness first. Okay? When the Lord showed me my wickedness, the Lord cleaned it up for me. After that, I tried to go back to those teachers a little while, and I was like, no, what are you doing? Get away from them. And then the Lord started to show me through his word that how these people and their fruit is absolutely rotten. Okay? A good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit, Brian. Okay? Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. But yet you're going to laugh at others. God is also going to mock when your calamity cometh, Brian. 
you're out there supporting JT, who's out there trying to make a little celebrity of himself, using the word of the Lord for such. You're out there trying to make yourself money on the word of God. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay? You cannot. to help you in that situation. That's all the text is saying. <laughs> all right? Um, verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change, for their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? We read in the other study. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. Huh. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. See, right there, that, that if you're saying verse 17, you shouldn't say anything about people that are wicked being judged of the Lord, um, then you have a real problem. Hey, uh, Brian, once again, twisting people's words. No one said that. You're not supposed to rejoice when your enemy falleth, nor let thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. No one's saying that, oh, God's wrong for judging wicked people. No one's saying that, Brian. Why don't you stop trying to twist people's words, sir? When you get down to verse... 24 and verse 25. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous. He's a good person. There's some right things, some good things. Yeah. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous. Nations shall abhor him. Him shall the people curse. I said you are righteous for years, Brian. And that's exactly what happened with me. Moving on things about this criminal that stole your catalytic converter. You know, literally saw some some wicked child came out and he was rebuking me and saying that, that God cares more about that lost thief than he does about me. And he does. Because unlike you, Brian, that lost thief is not out there attacking the word of God, attacking the truly saved people. That lost man's not out there twisting scripture. Okay? So, according to God's righteous judgment, that, that thief that stole your catalytic converter, he still has a chance. You, sir, you have twisted the word of God for years. You're adding to the scriptures and you're doing it knowingly. You twist the words of anyone who tries to say anything against you. You are constantly causing the strife and divisions non-stop. And you send wolves out to attack people who say anything against you. You, sir, are a Pharisee. Okay? And what did the Lord say to the Pharisees? Ye vipers, ye generation of serpents, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Brian, if I were you, I would not laugh at anyone going to hell because you're going to the exact same place. Three times in this book, people are warned, don't add or subtract from the word. Deuteronomy, Proverbs, and Revelation. Okay? And also warned about preaching another gospel. Okay? You know, perverting the gospel of the grace of Christ. Yeah, Brian. You, you continue to laugh at people that are going to hell, see what good that gets you. I said, how does that work? Uh, no, he's a lost thief. God's wrath is upon him. So are you, Brian. You're a lost thief. Is it from you don't go around stealing catalytic converters, you're stealing souls. So you're judging there with hypocrisy. You have not taken the beam out of thine eye, but you're going to judge this moat that's in someone else's eye. Because they stole a bit of rusty catalytic converter from a rusty, run-down truck. That deserves hypocrite of the century award, sir. I'm not going to take any 
glory and whatever else for catching the guy and things. I'm not going to take that glory away from the Lord when that happens. I hope the Lord does something to stop the guy from doing it again. And if I find out, find out that one of my neighbors gets robbed and actually shoots the guy, comes out and they, they hear him with his hacksaw or whatever underneath the vehicle cutting their catalytic converter off and they come out and they, and they kill the guy, good, now I can sleep better at night. I'm glad that that happened. I'm not going to say, oh, he might have had a good you know, thing and maybe he wasn't given enough chocolate chip cookies when he was a boy. Yep. Right there, you're showing your true spirit there again, Brian. You're not pleading the cause of the poor and needy, okay? I don't know the man who done that, okay? I don't know if he's poor and needy or not, okay? But you're not there even thinking about the cause. You're just going, oh, this individual stole from me. They deserve this. They deserve that. God killed them. Um, chapter and verse. You're not obeying Romans 12, which is doctrine for us today. Twist it however you want. Look at it however you want. Go into the Old Testament all you want. But you're wrong. Straight up. And, and that's why he turned out bad. Oh, I, I just wish I could have shared the gospel. See that? That is wickedness, Brian. That is emulation. Okay. That's mocking, that's a scorner. You're walking after your own ungodly lusts, sir. The flesh is just taken right over in that video. But like I said, you don't have the Holy Spirit of truth inside you, so of course the flesh is going to take over. He closed his mind off to the gospel when he started stealing. Cap so did you, Brian. You done that. As soon as you started using this word for your own gain. Esau was a man of the field. Judas Iscariot purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. All I'm saying. Catalytic converter, converters. He has no fear of God when he's going around stealing from other people. You have no fear of God when you're twisting his word. The word that he holds higher than his own name. Do you know the name that, hmm, that none other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved? And you'll take the precious word of God, which God holds higher than his own name, and you're just going to twist the living daylights out of it, take for your own benefit, to excuse your own wickedness. No, Brian, you have no fear of God, sir. You do not have any fear of God. Bring the guy to justice. I'll rejoice. Bring you to justice, Brian. Okay? And I won't rejoice when you go to hell. No. See, Brian, you don't understand the judgment of God too well. That there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which needs no repentance. The angels of God sing for joy in heaven when a sinner repents and turns from their wicked way. Yeah. As for the, the wicked, do you know what I mean? On the day of destruction, when they get sent to hell, no one's going to be singing for joy then. Okay? People will delight themselves in the abundance of peace after the kingdom. Okay? But that's not because the wicked are going to hell that they're rejoicing. It's because at that time it'll be like, Lord, finally that's all done. All the wickedness is done within the earth. There's no more abusers. There's no more oppressors. There's no more wicked. It's not rejoicing because they're going to burn in hell. In fact, God taketh no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. See what I mean? The will of the Lord is that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. When I see that and say, okay, thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Now we don't have to think about when I'm out here in a wild area like this. Thank you. And also to touch on the point as well. Yeah, it's more important to give that man the gospel. Rather than just going, getting him arrested or whatever. 
why didn't you forgive the man and say, look, bud, do you know what I mean? Like, you, like, you could have said this, Brian, okay? You could have turned around and said this to the thief, okay? Look, I mean, officers drop the charges in that man, and you could have asked him, look, why did you steal that from me? And he might have told you. He might have said, look, I run an international ministry, so, like, I could give you some money if you need some money, do you know what I mean? You could have done that, Brian, and that would have been bringing forth good fruits of the Spirit. But no. King, oh, great. Is he stealing something else from my property? Is he back there just no fear of God? People have some weird notions nowadays. Some of these young people. No, Brian. It's just that we're saved. Okay? That's a simple fact of the matter. And you don't understand the judgment of God, Brian. Evil men understandeth not judgment. It's a simple fact of the matter. Do you think you're the only person on this earth who you've been sto who's been stolen from? Do you think you're the only person? Hmm? Do you think you're the only person that's went through anything remotely difficult? Do you think you're the only person who, quote-unquote, is poor. Brian, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, sir. You're an utter disgrace to the body of Christ, and stop trying to pretend to be a member of the body of Christ because you're the farthest thing from it. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing. Been raised with all the situation ethics and secular humanism and everything else that everybody has good in them and whatever. What's it say there? Verse 24, He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous. Him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. When you exalt the evil, when you say, oh, they have some righteous characteristics, there's some good in them, the people should curse. No one is saying, no one is exalting the evil. Okay? Saying plead the cause of the poor and needy. Okay? And nine out of ten times, Brian, you find out thieves steal because they are poor. Okay? That man wasn't going to go sell your catalytic converter for thousands of pounds or whatever. He stole it off a rust bucket. He stole it off a rust bucket, Brian. Do you not get that? Okay? The man probably thought the truck itself was junk. Do you know like you and your wife and your son did a few years ago when he's found the decrepit school bus? You know I mean, you took all the bits and pieces off of it. Why? Because it was junk, correct? Well, maybe that man has thought the same thing. After all, your truck was, you even said it yourself, it was a dead truck, no longer worked, it was covered in rust. Simple as that. Curse you for that. The body of Christ should curse you for that. Oh, well, you know, hey everybody, um, here we have a meeting of all the Bible-believing Christians came together and we're all fellowshipping together. And um, I forgot to mention that my good friend, whatever over here, Tim or something will say is the name. Um, he's a child molester. He's a convicted pedophile. But, I, you know, he's got some really good characteristics. Again, Brian, do you see how you're taking things massively out of context? Do you see what you're doing there? That's a technique of those people who you claim to be against. Okay? Making mountains out of mold hills. Don't bring him in. There's a big difference between a filthy child molester who abuses kids. There's a big difference between that. You know, it'd better be a, it'd be better for a man that a millstone be tied about his neck and he'd be cast into the sea than he's an offend one of these little ones. There's a big difference between a paedophile, Brian and someone who's maybe just thought your truck was garbage. Do you know what I mean? And they've maybe just taken the catalytic converter, 
maybe they wanted to sell it for a bit of scrap money so they knew they could feed their family. Okay? They weren't going to sell that bit of rubbish to get themselves anything. Okay? It's a bit of scrap metal. They would have got pennies for it. Which probably shows that if someone's desperate enough to do that, they probably 9 out of 10% they're poor. They needed to eat probably. Man. <laughs> you need to judge things. You need to judge things righteously, Brian. Verse 25. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. I rebuke these wicked people. That's what I'm supposed to do as a preacher. Not say, oh, they're good. They're, you know, they're, don't judge them. I should, we shouldn't judge. Explain the act of the woman caught in adultery then. Explain to me, Brian, how the woman of Samaria, who had five husbands, do you know what I mean? Explain to me how the Lord appeared unto her and gave her the water of life. Explain to me the woman caught in the act of adultery who they were all going to throw up in stones because she had done this bad thing according to the law. But the Lord had mercy on her. Explain that, Brian. You cannot because you don't understand the judgment of God. Anybody. That's nonsense. You know, I did, did the study that God hates these people that uh, go over the, the thing in Proverbs chapter 6. Proud look and a lying tongue and hands that, you know, or feet that are swift and running to men. And hands that shed innocent blood. Yeah, Brian. And every single one of those things you have. Your ministry has shed innocent blood, Brian. You're leading souls to hell. That is shedding innocent blood. Your feet are swift and running to mischief and you keep bringing out all these false doctrines which cause nothing but destruction among believers. You have a proud look, Brian. You won't receive correction from anyone and anything unless they're a part of your club. And even then you barely receive correction. Brian, you way across the line over Proverbs 6. Know what I mean? I'm surprised you're not over there singing the lullabies with Esau and Judas Iscariot. Okay? You're out there blessing the wicked. Okay? You've not rebuked JT yet on his book. Jacob Thompson is the Lord of Glory. Hmm? Considering it's the Lord Jesus Christ himself who is supposed to show someone that doctrine. JT has no right making a book on it. He's got no right of making the Lord look like a rainbow monkey and putting it in the cover. I'm sorry to say this. In fact, no, I don't, I don't repent of saying this, Jacob Thompson. But the, your book, it looks like a sodomite parade flag. And then you'll put the name Lord of Glory on it. You should look at one of the times it says Lord of Glory in the scriptures, JT. You know, have not respect of persons. Like you idolise Brian. I'll we'll actually go there. Go to James. Okay. And the reason why I'm being so formal about this is I'm just trying to be impartial. Okay. James chapter 2 verse 1 My brethren, have not the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. That verse JT grasses you right up. So back to Brian's wickedness. 
mischief, hands that shed innocent blood, the whole list there. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And you had every single one, Brian. Well, brother, that's just your opinion. No, it's what the Bible says. Yeah, Brian, maybe not. You can read that proverb correctly. Hmm? So why can't you read the others without twisting them? It really looks to me like the Lord is only showing you enough of his word to convict you of your wickedness. But like a hypocrite does, you point the finger out the way. I'm releasing this video, okay? And after that, I don't want your name mentioned in my channel. I'm done with you. I wash my hands of you, okay? I prayed last night to the Lord that he'd lead you and Brad Ovenshine to repentance. But I really don't think that is going to happen. Anyways. Anyways, brethren. Mark and avoid this man. Okay? Mark and avoid Brian Denlinger. Avoid him like the plague. Okay? Seriously, like, a long story short, this man is destructive. Okay? With all that said and done, brethren in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.